Zdravo, jel se čujemo? Dobro večer svima, ja vas odlično čujem. E, sjajno. Dušica dolazi sa fakulteta, filozofskog fakulteta u Beogradu i filozofskog fakulteta u Novom Sadu i ona će nam predstaviti svoju temu, ne znam na kom jeziku? Na engleskom. Na engleskom. Free and open source software in a laboratory and online research in experimental psychology. Um, Dušica, izvoli. Uh, hvala, Nadice. Thank you very much for having me with you today. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I will talk um, about free and open source software in laboratory and online research in experimental psychology. So uh, as you uh, heard, my name is Dušica Hripović Djurđević. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Psychology at Faculty of Philosophy, University of Belgrade. And I conduct my research at Laboratory for Experimental Psychology, uh, both in Belgrade and in Novi Sad. I study cognition with a particular focus on language. And I conduct my research within the framework of experimental psychology. Now, experimental psychology is a branch of psychology which applies experimental method in the study of psychological processes. That's the easiest, easiest way to put it. I would like to stress that it is defined primarily by the scientific method, which can then be applied to different contents. Therefore, we can talk about experimental cognitive psychology, experimental social psychology, even experimental clinical psychology. One thing common to all experimental psychology disciplines and particularly important for experiments in cognition is the need for precise control of the stimuli presentation. Experimental psychology has a long tradition in this as hopefully illustrated by this over a century old mnemometer which uh, belongs to the collection of old psychological instruments of laboratory for experimental psychology, which is also open, I have to say. Uh, but in addition to precise control of stimuli presentation, we are also in need of precise timing of response latencies as, and experimental psychology has also mastered this, uh, this um, skill a long time ago, as again, hopefully illustrated by this chronoscope. During the course of the 20th century, the precision was further enabled, for example, by the use of this tachistoscope, which was also a very precise device. However, all this uh, early precision came with the price uh, as uh, the process of preparing and conducting experiments was very laborious and very time consuming. So you can imagine why the computer technology was warmly welcomed in the experimental psychology laboratories during the 70s and the 80s. And this technology is of course being applied today and hopefully will be applied for many years to come. Unsurprisingly, ever since the computers found their way into our labs, the market for experimental software has been flourishing as well. So multiple applications have been offered, the most popular being E-Prime, Presentation, Superlab, Experiment, uh, Builder, Inquisit, DirectRT, and so on. Typically, these applications have graphical user interface, which is usually very user-friendly, enable precise control uh, over stimuli display, be it text or sound or image, or video or something more complex. They enable precise measurement of response latencies. They make it possible to connect with other devices such as EEG or fMRI or eye tracker and so on. They come with plenty of pre-prepared -pre templates. They offer tutorials and so on. However, some find them expensive and many uh, find it very um, uh, unfriendly that the most important things are actually hidden from the user uh, of, this, uh, of these applications. So the researchers were reacting by writing their own code for their own research. And soon they started sharing it with the community and the community grew, started to join at uh, forums and uh, started creating tutorials and uh, pre-prepared templates to help other researchers and eventually uh, some other more skilled users built graphic user interface. So this code was now being built by the scientists 
to fit the needs of the scientists. And also, as the source code was frequently open, this actually meant that the code was adapting much faster uh, to the needs of the research um, community. And soon many, many free applications were offered. So the most popular ones were DMDX, PsychoPy, and Open Sesame, but many more were built and are being used actively. So for example, Video Toolbox, Psych Toolbox in MATLAB, Pebble, PyScope, uh, SciToolkit, uh, T-Scope, Vision Egg, T Tool, X Factory, Node Game, and so on. Uh, I had the pleasure of being part of the team who created local home version of one free experimental software uh, application named Ultra Lab. I will shortly say something about the DMDX, PsychoPy, and Open Sesame. I had decided to start by drawing your attention to DMDX because it is one of the oldest free application in, applications in experimental psychology. It has been being built since 1975 and has been maintained to date to the best of my knowledge. The most prominent feature of this software, as stated by uh, its authors, is its high precision in the timing of stimuli presentation. Here you can see just the opening uh, screen of the MDX. And I will briefly show you just one part of the item file or script. So uh, here you can see that the script is being uh, built in a rich text format, which is here presented using LibreOffice, of course. Uh, so the header line contains global parameters, for example, screen color, response keys, number of stimuli, and so on. Uh, but then it's followed by item lines, first, the instructions for the participant, and then the definition of the stimuli uh, to be presented. And here, uh, the, the so-called what you see is what you get principle is followed. So uh, if you want something to be in blue, then it should be in blue in rich text format uh, here. Uh, however, although DMDX has been very popular at the turn of the century, it has now been replaced by PsychoPy. PsychoPy is a Python library for controlling the stimuli presentation and response selection as well. A group of more than 90 individuals has been working on this library since 2002 with a simple and clear goal of making the best out of the power of OpenGL, as the author stated, and simplicity of Python programming. The library became famous for its uh, technical qualities in the first place, but its popularity star rocketed when the PsychoPy Builder appeared. PsychoPy Builder is the graphical interface which allows for simple creation of Python code for running the experiment. The code is simply built by dragging and dropping individual items along this horizontal timeline. So if you want the instructions, you just drag and drop the screen for instructions. You insert the timing and go on to the next uh, screen, which the participant is going to be presented with. So it's really very simple. And what comes out is the Python code. Around the same time, another group of researchers was developing the same idea and building another graphical interface for creating the code in PsychoPy library as well. This application is called Open Sesame and has and has gained incredible popularity during the course of several years, really quickly, from 2012. Uh, it also uses the drag and drop option for creating the code. However, the horizontal timeline is now replaced with this vertical sequence of instructions, but the idea behind it is basically the same. So, as I said, instructions can be inserted using uh, this graphical interface, which gives both Open Sesame and PsychoPy Builder their simplicity. However, uh, the same goal can be accomplished by inserting the code in inline script. So here, one uses a specific for the form of coding language, something like Open Sesame language. But if you know how to code in Python, then you can insert the instructions using Python code as well. So the fe this feature adds 
uh, flexibility, which is preferred by more advanced users, in addition to simplicity preferred by those lack, less technically skilled. At this point, so I presented several free options for uh, preparing the experiments. At this point, the experimental labs have been equipped with useful tools. However, the, re the researchers were not pleased because we started to notice that instead of building and testing theories on humankind, we were actually testing our theories on a specific subgroup of so-called weird individuals, namely psychology students and the volunteers who happened to live near universities. So they were Western, educated, industrialized, rich and democratic individuals. And that insight has motivated lab research to step out of the lab and go into the wild, as we say. And the best way to do that nowadays is to collect data on the web. And that is exactly the path that the community has chosen. Of course, the pandemic situation that we have been dealing with these, this year has made this transition actually absolutely necessary and a must for the researchers. The commercial market has uh, of course identified this need and has uh, several applications to offer, most famous of which are Qualtrics, Gorilla and Inquisit Web. But the question is, do we have free software to cover the need of collecting the data online? And I will approach this question from three different sides by identifying three challenges of online data collection. The first challenge is how to conduct the experiment on different computers, computers with different settings and different computational power. The second challenge concerns the question of where to store the data and how to distribute uh, this code which is going to run the experiment. And the third challenge concerns the way of recruiting the participants now that we cannot access them through a university course or uh, what, some billboards. So the first challenge is addressed by presenting the stimuli in the browser. So the participant is actually downloading the code that we have already prepared and running the experiment on the local machine. Because the experiment is run in the browser, now the code needs to be in uh, either JavaScript, HTML, or CSS, or some other language that the browser can, inter can understand, so to say. Do we have free uh, options for preparing this code? Of course we do. During the course of, I believe, three years, we have multiple options to choose from. So we have uh, both PsychoPy and Open Sesame developing uh, their web uh, versions, but we also have JS Psych, Lab.js, and several other options to choose from. Uh, the second challenge, uh, how to store data and how to distribute the experiment, implies that we need a server to store our code. And the server needs to be equipped with the, the software that can prepare the links for the participants. We also need to have the control over these links to decide if it is going to be prepared for one participant or the group, whether it enables single access or multiple access from one IP address and so on. Finally, the server needs to store the collected data. And the free solutions for this challenge also exist the most popular being JTUS and Cognition Run. Pavlovia was the first one, but unfortunately, when their funding ended, it has stopped being free. It used to follow code built in PsychoPy uh, Builder. Finally, the links need to be distributed to participants, typically via some crowdsourcing platforms. Uh, the participation here needs to be paid, and some of you may have heard of Amazon Mechanical Turk, Prolific Academic, or uh, Sona Systems. Uh, so all of these uh, imply that participants will be uh, receiving some financial uh, benefit from participating in your experiment, but alternative solutions are being developed. Uh, alternatively, 
if you do not have any funding, you can use social media. But uh, the best option is to build some kind of online quiz and then uh, motivate uh, people to participate in your experiment by giving them some kind of feedback on their performance and making the participation fun. So there are multiple options like test my brain, small world of words, games with words and so on, the music lab. Uh, all of these uh, experiments are collecting data while people are having fun playing the games, so to say. So to summarize, online data collection is covered with free solutions as well. Finally, I would like to end by comparing the performance of the commercial and the free software applications. I will do so with respect to the important issues in chronometric studies. Accuracy refers to a fixed error actually a lag that is being introduced during the measuring process. However, uh, this issue is easily resolved by uh, taking this lag into account or by using repeated measures design. This is particularly important for online studies where we never know whether we are comparing different computers or different participants' performance. So this problem is we can, we can fix it. On the other hand, precision is variable uh, between trials. It's a variable trial by trial error, the size of which is unknown to us, and hence it is impossible to fix. Therefore, we will compare commercial and free software in terms of precision. Here, I'm presenting the results of the recent study by Bridges et al. in which they showed that when applied in the laboratory con conditions, all of the applications performed with under millisecond variation between the trials. So as you can see here, it's less than one millisecond variation from one trial to another. Um, if we focus um, on the commercial applications, so here, these are NBS presentation and E prime, which are the two most prestigious applications. So if we focus on them and compare them to the free applications, we will see that there is hardly any difference in performance in various tasks. When it comes to uh, online data collection, uh, precision is uh, less impressive for all of the tested applications, but again, there is not much difference between the free and commercial software applications. So, I would like to conclude that free software from conduct, um, for conducting psychological experiments has all the benefits of the commercial software, such as precision, reliability, simplicity, and support, community support especially, but also has some additional benefits of being free in so many ways, being transparent and being highly flexible and adaptive. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Dushita. Unfortunately, we do not have um, so much time for uh, questions. Uh, I would like to call for another speaker. Um, and if you can stay a little bit more uh, till the end of the session, I just want to conclude, if I may, your presentation with being weird is fine. We can earn money by fulfilling the questionnaires or have fun. And psychologists rocks. Uh, don't underestimate their knowledge on computer science because I've heard that you know to program in R, Python, JavaScript, CSL, and HTML. That's quite impressive. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I, I'm in charge of questions uh, in this case. But uh, in particular, I was amazed uh, in English. Was it in English? You're yeah. the organizers, you decide. <laughs> I'm fine either way. Oh, um, well, I, I was amazed by your uh, background in computational skills. Do you believe, do you agree that uh, psychologists are mainly, dominantly, predominantly um, technophobic? 
that uh, they don't uh, enjoy uh, technical achievements. Uh, that's my question, because my experience is such, uh, not justified with statistical data, but when dealing with uh, man machine, machine interfaces, I had hard time talking to psychologists and uh, there was actually no interest in uh, dealing with such issues. Any comment on that? Thank you for that question. Uh, psychology is a, really a wide area. So we, I have colleagues uh, who claim they do not need statistics or technical aid. Uh, but also I have colleagues who know how to code, not just in Python, but in some other programming languages. Uh, I have colleagues who build uh, their own uh, applications. For example, Open Sesame was built by a psychologist, by a cognitive psychologist. So uh, well, the first thing is I believe that psychologists are a very widespread group of people. So we have different interests and different back come from different backgrounds. Uh, but also I think uh, we are facing a turn of the tide, so to say. <laughs> For example, I teach my students uh, Python the best that I can. I have some help from uh, some of my uh, colleagues, but uh, I believe that psychologists uh, do need both coding skills and all technical aid they can um, get. Okay, that's great, but uh, well, Another question, maybe? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, if you have time, that's great. Uh, you said that psychologists, uh, psychologists need uh, programming skills. Actually, I believe that uh, everybody needs uh, programming skills because um, programming is some sort uh, or some way to build uh, your logical skills. Uh, you can test your approach to reality there. You can program and you expect one answer, then you get another, then you should debug. Uh, you can learn when, where you are wrong. Any studies uh, in that area? Uh, does, um, actually, to pose my question, uh, does uh, learning programming uh, learning programming skills uh, improve intellectual ability of uh, students? Unfortunately, I'm not aware of uh, the published research on that topic, uh, which doesn't uh, imply that none uh, such research has been uh, conducted. But um, I can't answer that question at this point, because simply I'm not aware of that kind of research. But I would expect that to be true, to be honest. But simply at this point, I, I have, I'm not aware of the published uh, research that I can rely upon, so to say. Uh, okay, I'm just asking another thing. Uh, is my question stupid? Meaning that, uh, do you believe that there might be any correlation between uh, intellectual abilities and programming skills? Or you need a study for that? I need a study for that because I wouldn't sound professional if I gave you my honest opinion, but I, I can share one uh, personal opinion because uh, sometimes uh, to me, it feels that uh, programmers and psychologists are very alike because programmers are something like psychologists for the computers <laughs> in a way. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> And uh, you're doing fine with the debugging, I guess. <laughs> I'm not that kind of psychologist, unfortunately. I'm experimental psychologist. Oh yeah, so no debugging. <laughs> no debugging, just observing. Yeah, okay, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Dushita. Uh, hope to see you next time in person. Thank you for being here. Bye. Thank you for, for inviting me. Bye. Um,